customers profiles of all prospective candidates log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants and let kenyans know more about you your past achievements your manifesto and your development agenda once you get elected to office what's more the website is easy to navigate we will create your profile post pictures and short videos with your campaign messages at affordable hosting fees log on to www.kbc.co.ke slash 2022 aspirants today and establish your brand authority as we lead towards the forthcoming general elections Going to be auctioned off and she lent money to jack on purpose with my stock shares as pledge she schemes with pinky to get us down what did i have always loved you i'm overjoyed that you came back to life why are you still begging her to come back to you can you just stay out of my sight you crazy woman you're to blame for all of this my husband stole your land how could he know your father at all go back and ask him about it Did you know that while many road traffic crashes are avoidable, human behavior continues to be the leading cause? Stop these crashes before they stop you. Ensure that you adhere to traffic rules to prevent these crashes. Always observe the fatal six to be safe. When driving, please ensure that your speed is within the stipulated limits, the road ahead is clear before overtaking, stick to your lane, keep left unless carefully overtaking. Ensure that you are well rested before driving on long distance and never drink and drive. Usalama Barabarani starts with you. Fika Salama. This message is brought to you by NTSA and the European Union. Welcome to Self-Care Tips. I am Irene Jiroge, and we're going to talk about how to keep your cool when you're under pressure. You don't have to be someone who's working in a high-pressure office to encounter these things. You could be even at home, a housewife, a student, a college person, or even somebody who is just not doing anything, but you find that that in itself gives you a lot of pressure. When you're under pressure, it is important to take charge and to be in control so that it does not get worse, it does not escalate. Remember, anything we discuss here is indeed helpful, but always seek the advice of a doctor or a medical professional who will help you through some of these things. If you have ever experienced burnout, you know how important it is to always take a breather. When you don't take time off, you'll find yourself doing things over time. After three years of living like this, you could find yourself on the way to a meltdown. When you experience a meltdown, here are the signs. Number one, you become scatterbrained. You actually don't have thoughts that are in line. Your thoughts are not processed, and you also look frazzled and disorganized. At the same time, you're not performing. You seem to be doing things, but you're just running on the spot, just doing things on auto mode. This is definitely a sign of meltdown and when this happens you can be sure that the next call you're going to get is from human resources therefore take a breather keep your weekends for yourself get me time don't let it be always about pressure always about work and always about looking for money of course these things are very important but at the same time you need space you need a break Take time to pray, take time to relax, take time to spend time away from your work, and this way you will survive any burnout or meltdown. This is self-care tips on how to keep cool during times of pressure. I am Irene Joroge. Did you know that while many road traffic crashes are avoidable, human behavior continues to be the leading cause? Stop these crashes before they stop you. 
ensure that you adhere to traffic rules to prevent these crashes. Always observe the fatal six to be safe. When driving, please ensure that your speed is within the stipulated limits, the road ahead is clear before overtaking, stick to your lane, keep left unless carefully overtaking, ensure that you are well rested before driving on long distance, and never drink and drive. Usalama Barabarani starts with you. Fika Salama. This message is brought to you by NTSA and the European Union. Hello from wherever you're watching us. It's Monday, the 25th day of April 2022. This is KBC Prime Edition coming to you live from Broadcasting House right here in the capital city, Nairobi, Kenya. And the body of the former, late former president, Emilio Mwai Kibaki, you know, lying in state for the first day and this will continue until Wednesday and Kenyans continue to send in their condolences and of course telling, you know, people how they remember him for. That's right. How do you remember him yourself? Oh, wow. To me, President uh, Kibaki was like a grandfather. I found him very funny. Each time I saw him, I was, I was prepared to laugh. Okay. You know, he was connecting with a young demographic and there was a, a point he was warning young people yeah. not to drink, not indulge in drinking. And, and he yet. said it in a very funny yeah. way. I'm not <laughs> telling you this because I do not drink. Yeah. You know, it was very funny, but the point yeah. was home. And very clever. Mm. A brilliant way of of connecting with uh, the younger uh, demographic. How about you? How do you remember the late president? For me, uh, coming from a, an area where tension remains high mm -hmm. due to the resurgence of the cattle rustling, rustling yeah. I, I'll remember him for the fight he put against cattle rustling. Mm -hmm. He actually even asked people, mm -hmm. Kama kazi yako ni kuiba ngombe, uko na maana gani? Hauna yeah. maana kabisa. Hauna maana. And that was the point where he called, he referred to people as mafia cuckoo. <laughs> so being a market where cattle rustling is very serious, yeah, yeah. I, I recommend him for the fight he put against cattle rustling. Against cattle and rustling. may his soul rest okay. in eternal peace. Well, um, what I remember about him was his low-key style of leadership. Mm -hmm. He was brilliant. He was a competent technocrat and uh, he rejected uh, mm -hmm. having his name on the portrait of, of our Kenyan currency. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and th th those are the things that really stood out. Of course, there were moments of hiccups here and there. Oh, yes. But uh, in the African culture, we prefer to remember the pleasant memories. Thank Absolutely. you for joining us. And we are starting this live broadcast with our headline stories. Respect befitting an icon, body of the late President Mwai Kibaki, lying in state, a parliament bill. Returning home in honor of the former president, Raila cuts a short U.S. trip to attend burial. And it's back to school. Learning resumes as parents decry cost of education materials.
Thank you very much indeed for joining us. My name is Tom Boyer. And I'm Purity Mseo at KBC Channel 1 News at Tom Boyer 24. And of course the hashtag to use tonight is Prime Edition. Lensa Odingo is our sign language interpreter tonight. We begin with our top story. President Uhuru Kenyatta Monday led the nation in the viewing of the body of the late former president Emilio Mwai Kibake which lay in state at parliament buildings. Deputy President Dr. William Ruto was among the dignitaries who joined the head of state in paying their homage to the late former president of Kenya. Timothy Kipnusu opens our coverage. President Uhuru Kenyatta on Monday led the nation in the viewing of the body of the late retired President Mwai Kibaki. The motorcade of the head of state arrived at the parliament buildings at 10 a.m. The president was received by the deputy president, William Ruto, in a rare show of unity, political differences aside, and the two speakers of the parliament. Thank you. Leaders eulogizing the late former president as a man who turned around the country's economy, with many urging aspirants eyeing different positions in the August polls to emulate the late president. All the leaders who aspire to be in various positions, whether they are member of parliament, especially governors, and uh, those who aspire for presidential positions, uh, we expect and we want to encourage them to put economy central to the country so that we are able to move to the next level. The bottom line is to grow our economy, make sure that um, we mechanize our agriculture, like what Muse started, make sure that we have more industries so that we can do value addition for our products and make sure that our people work. When he got to the reins of power, he was able to give us many universities, privatized even education by making it possible to have private universities and even opened up opportunities in our public universities. Yeye binafsi kama kiongozi alikuwa amechukia ufisadi na alifanya lolote liwe kwamba wakati hata cabinet eh, ilihusishwa na ufisadi na tukapata serikali iko na ma, madai ya, ya ufisadi wakati alikuwa rais aliweza kuwafuta kazi mawaziri Timothy Kipnusu for Prime Edition Well, how do you remember the late President Emilio Mwai Kibaki? Please do engage us on our social media platforms. We are live on all of them at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity underscore Museo at Tom Boyer 2 for the hashtag to use. That's on Twitter. It's Prime Edition. So get on your phone. Hundreds flocked parliament buildings to view the body of the former President Mwai Kibaki. The long queues stretching from parliament buildings to City Hall almost 800 meters away. None so query with that story. Monday marked the first day where the body of retired President Mwai Kibaki will lie in state at parliament buildings for three days. Kenyans from all walks of life thronged the parliament precincts and queued patiently to view the body of the former head of state. Some traveling from as far as Kakamega to pay their respects to the late former president. Ani na kuambi ni rishikuwa na usuni vile ni disikia president ya kitangasa ni raisi mwenye nilipenda sana. So kwa hivyo na safiri kutoka kakameka kule shinyalu kwa bichichi kule. So paka nafika hapa na eropi kuona mwili na shukuru kwa chiri ya kupata na fasi kuenda kutasama mwili. Nyumbani ni kakameka luandeti mahanga. Nilikuwa na mpenda sana president wetu na alituongoza vizuri ya katiletea maendeleo ndiyo maana nikasema nifike hapa. Kenya's eulogize in Kibaki is a leader who drove the country's economy forward and engineered reforms in the education sector. Tusaidia sana upande wa ujenzi wa taifa. Kiti ya kwanza alifumbua upande wa CDF kutoa shule shule free education hospital free tujifunia kwake yeye kwa sababu ya ya free primary education kwa sababu ya gharama je ingekuwa wakati huo na wasasa ile gharama ambao ya wazazi wangelipa na wakati huu vile economy hii vile iko sasa wa, wazazi wangeumia sana nakumbuka marehemu kibaki kwa kazi kubwa ambayo alifanya akiwa president kwa kutengeneza mabarabara nyingi na pia stima kibaki alikuwa mzuri mzuri juu alitengeneza theka highway spa highway alikuwa anatukuta na chafu anatuambia tuvae viatu 
Anasema vijana wa country basi waoge, wasaidio vile waneza oga na wabaye vijatu. Kwa hivyo siwezi sema uwe mzee alikuwa mbaya. Kama ni pesa ya kusaidia alikuwa napaya vijana sana. The body of the late president will lie in state at parliament until Wednesday, with Kenyans urged to turn up in large numbers to pay their respects. Nancy Okwari, Prime Edition. Many people continuing to send in their last respects to the late president Emilio Mwaikibaki. How do you remember him? Please do engage us on Twitter at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity underscore Museo at Tomboy24. The hashtag is Prime Edition. We are also live on Facebook and YouTube. How the convoy escorting the body of the late president left the Lee funeral home at 10 minutes to 7 headed four parliament buildings. The exercise was conducted with military precision and here is more with John Jacob Curia. At 10 minutes to 7 a.m. at Lee Funeral, a Kenyan flag draped casket was hoisted on a military carriage. headed for parliament buildings for the solemn ceremony of viewing the body of Kenya's third president, Mwai Kibaki. The convoy snaking through Valley Road, Kenyatta Avenue to Huru Highway, Parliament Road, and finally to parliament buildings. At exactly quarter past seven, The Kenya Defense Forces soldiers lifted the casket from the carriage to parliament buildings. National salute! Arms. As the military band hummed solemn tunes from their instruments. Then senior dignitaries and government officials started to stream to parliament buildings as the military continued to prepare the body for viewing. 10 minutes to 10 a.m., the deputy president, Dr. William Ruto, arrives in parliament buildings to usher in President Uhuru Kenyatta, who would arrive 12 minutes later to lead the nation in celebrating a man described as a gentle giant, an economist par excellence, and the initiator of a free primary education. The body of the late president lying on a white presidential standard flag, which is a standard he used during his reign as president. A retired bishop of the Catholic Archdiocese of Nairobi, Cardinal John Jue, would read a few convocations before the body viewing began. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. President Kenyatta and First Lady Margaret Kenyatta leading the park. <laughs> Followed by President Kibaki's family, the Deputy President, Service Commanders, Speakers of both Houses of Parliament, Majority and Minority Leaders in both Chambers, Cabinet Secretaries, senior government officials and opinion leaders in the country, diplomats and finally members of the public. The body viewing will continue on Tuesday and Wednesday ahead of interdenominational service at Nyayo Stadium on Friday and the burial ceremony in his native Odaya home on Saturday. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. Narok County Commander Kizito Motoro, who served as the late President Mwai Kibaki's personal bodyguard for 10 years, has eulogized the former president as an astute, charming, and charismatic leader. Kizito described the late president as a jovial and forgiving man who never missed church where he freely mingled with Kenyans from all walks of life. Ben Troy Njue is on that story. <laughs> Tumekaa nao na mzee kwa miaka mingi sana. The, the close protective unit ile yake. John Kizito Mutoro, who worked for the late former president for the 10 years as the leader of the close protection unit, 
has hailed the late leader as a man who highly valued education and even urged his security personnel to put emphasis on the same. Alikuwa anapenda elimu sana. Na kila mara kitu kilichotokezea lazima tu angekifanya angeleta tu furaha. Kwa hivyo alikuwa ni mzee mcheshi, rafiki na ni baba. He called on Kenyans to emulate him as he was a non-tribal leader ready to lend an ear to everyone. Alikuwa ni president ambaye anajua kutupatia mwelekeo kwa pati ya elimu. Hakutaka kujua ni nani unatoka wapi si ati labda ingekuwa ati ni mkikuyu ama ni mtu kutoka Gema ama kutoka zile area no 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 familia hiyo ilikuwa inatoa commodities zote according to the police boss Kibaki was a prayerful man who never missed a Sunday service and did not prefer a special seat for him in church kila wakati tulikuwa tukifanya sada kuomba kila wakati kama tujakula tunaomba kila mahali tunaomba uh, Sundays tunaenda kanisa na anafata uh, kanisa vile inaendelea mzee alikuwa ni mtu wa kuforgive uh, uh, mtu akimkosea uh, walikuwa wal, mkimkosea uh, kisha mwambia tu pole kwisha he fondly remembered the many times the former head of state used humor and charisma to lighten up the room every time during work mzee mwenyewe alikuwa ni mcheshi mm. mm. malipota alikungeza kukutana na watu unasikia tu ni story uh, mambo hata ungejua ni president alikuwa na indirect na kila mtu for prime edition i'm ben troenjue now members of the public have been given an opportunity to pen down their commiserations in honor of the late president Emilio Mwaikibaki from Tuesday at the CDF offices in Odaya. Burial preparations are meanwhile ongoing at the president's residence in Odaya, Nyeri County. A requiem mass will be held on Saturday 30th at approved stadium in Odaya, followed by the burial at his rural home. Frederick Mwaki reports. Somba mood continues to engulf in Odaya, Nyeri County, as political and religious leaders and residents mourn the demise of former President Mwai Kibaki. Members of the public will be able to jot down their commiserations through the office of CDF in Odaya. Gade Muruga, who worked for Kibaki at State House for 22 years, eulogized Kibaki as an outstanding person with passion for development. Tena, uhusiano wake na watu wale wengine, urikuwa wabere sana sana kusimama na kuongea na mtu na roho safi na tena e, mukarimu e, ikiwa ni kukusaidia yoyote na kwake tutamumis tena hata kwa golf club huko Nyeri other political leaders led by Gatundu South MP Moses Kuria said Kibaki was a true economist who valued the fears of development for the nation. The high sense of what we call cost-effect relationship. He knew when I do this, this will happen. And that's why he was able to have very balanced uh, development in this country. And as I said, he was a man of few words. He would then leave. And we used to love him. And he was a good man. Those years that he served in government, we have never had any allegations leveled towards him uh, concerning corruption. So that is something that we should emulate as leaders. Thaya, Tishing and Lefero Hospital, all, now that is what it is called now, we should, we should, it should be called Mwai Kibaki Odaya Tishing and Lefero Hospital in honor of our departed sage. Only set for the burial ceremony, which is scheduled to be held this Saturday at approved stadium in Odaya. Frederick Moki for Prime Edition. Kenyans still paying their tribute to a president who rejected naming of projects that he oversaw under his watch. Mm -hmm. Well, just a quick reminder that they can also join us by sending in. Absolutely, because the tribute, the, tribute, mm -hmm. um, the body is still lying in state up to Wednesday. And Three of days. course, yeah, and of course the burial will be on Saturday. So please send in your condolences at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity and Ascom, we'll at Tom Boyer, 2 for the hashtag is Prime Edition. All right, and we are taking a short break at this point. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Kenya has
has come a long way in ICT development. The government set up the Universal Service Fund to bring communication services to remote and hard to reach parts of the country. We are ensuring that every Kenyan is connected to business, to better education, to better health care, to a better life, so that no one is left behind in our journey to a digitally transformed nation. Communications Authority of Kenya, opening your world. Did you know that while many road traffic crashes are avoidable, human behavior continues to be the leading cause? Stop these crashes before they stop you. Never drink and drive. Usalama Barabarani starts with you. Fika Salama. This message is brought to you by NTSA and the European Union. You have to make that up. I didn't make anything up. Everything I said is the truth, I swear to what you. Why didn't I know anything about it? Well, that Gonzalo is often hot-headed, but... I think he would be incapable of doing something that despicable. Paulina decides to keep seeing Adria. Will you support your daughter? Oh, Gonzalo. I don't want to see Adrian in this house ever again. But Daddy, Adrian... No, but your relationship with him is over. I both know that everything she said was true. Well, yes, clearly you didn't only steal my money, but also that of the other partners. Well, there you are. How do you remember the late former president, Mwai Kibaki? Talk to us on our social media platforms, which are... At KBC Channel 1 News, at Purity underscore Museat Tomboya 24, the hashtag is Prime Edition. And tonight, on our weekly segment, The Cabinets. We pay tribute to the late former president, Emilio Mwai Kibaki. Born Emilio Stanley Moai Kibaki on 15th November 1931 in Gatugaine village of Aya in present-day Nyeri County, Kibaki worked as a lecturer at Makerere University in Uganda. Kibaki returned to Kenya to become Kanu's executive officer and helped draft Kenya's independence constitution. In 1962, Kibaki was elected the member of parliament for Donholm constituency, present-day Makadara. Subsequently, he was appointed Assistant Minister for Finance and Chairman of the Economic Planning Commission in 1963. He played a key role in drafting the famous 1965 sensational paper number no. 10 on African socialism and its application to planning in Kenya. He would be promoted to become Minister for Commerce and Industry in 1966. Well, we used to sell about 10% of our total manufactured products uh, to Tanzania. As it is now, with the border closed, we are not selling very much. We're still selling some. 
But we have found other markets. So the adjustment has been a little bit painful, but we've made it. And later Minister for Finance and Economic Planning in 1969 after he was re-elected to Parliament to represent Donholm constituency. Following what he said to be pressure from his closest rival in the 1969 elections, Ms. Jail Mbogo, Kibaki moved his political base from Nairobi to Othaya in 1974. He attributed this to what he termed calls from the people of Othaya. He was overwhelmingly elected Othaya MP in 1974, getting re-elected to parliament in 1979, 1983, 1988, 1992, 1997, 2002 and 2007. When Daniel Arab Moy succeeded Jomo Kenyatta as the country's president in 1978, Kibaki was named Kenya's vice president but retained his position as finance minister. He was moved to the Ministry of Home Affairs in 1982. A fallout with President Moy in March 1988 saw Kibaki demoted from the vice presidency and moved to the Ministry of Health as minister. Despite the fallout with Moi, Kibaki would remain loyal to the president and the ruling party Kanu, hence it came as a surprise for many when he resigned from government in December 1991, days after the repeal of Section 2A of the Constitution which restored multipartism in Kenya. His resignation would then see him form the Democratic Party, DP, with which he used to vie for presidency in 1992 against Moi, Kenneth Matiba and Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga. Kibaki came in third. He ran for presidency again in 1997, this time around finishing second behind Moi and becoming the leader of the official opposition in 1998. Mwai Kibaki would give the presidency another shot in 2002, this time around boosted by a host of other opposition parties under the National Alliance Rainbow Alliance. And truth to the saying, that time is the charm. On 27th December 2002, Kibaki and Nak registered a landslide victory over Kanu with 62% of the votes compared to his competitor Uhuru Kenyatta's 31%. The win brought an end to Kanu's four decades rule since independence. Kibaki got re-elected in 2007 for his second and final term as the president of Kenya. Mwai Kibaki passed away on the 22nd of April 2022. Very well. Now, let's shift gears and move into the world of politics and the Azimio La Umoja Kenya Kwanza presidential candidate Raila Odinga is tonight urging Kenyans in the diaspora to support his presidential bid which is anchored on a prosperous nation based on Vision 2030. Raila, who is in Washington, D.C., outlined his 10-point agenda, which include job creation and revival of collapsed industries, which he says that are key drivers of economic growth. Well, leaders accompanying him said that the coalition is guided by a desire to bring meaningful change in Kenya and not selfish political interests. The former Prime Minister who had been scheduled to be in the U.S. for a week will cut short his trip to return to the country to attend the burial of the former President Mwai Kibaki, whom he served together in the Grand Coalition government after the 2007 contested election. The President passed on when I was here. The first President passed on when I was coming here. And therefore I have to cut short my, my trip again to go back and bury President Mwai Kibaki. But that is his fate. Uh, uh, all the same, we are happy to meet all of you again here today and I see a new spirit among the Kenyan diaspora in the United States. We are looking for a team leader who can be uh, trusted, a person who has been tried and tested. A person who has been consistent and passionate in fighting for the rights of Kenyans. There is no other person in the race 
except Baba the Fifth. And I can say quite clearly that from the looks in the political terrain, we have a president with us. I have also come to confirm that from central Kenya, for the first time in the history of Kenya, we are going to vote for Baba. Now, on education, schools across the country reopen this week in the 2022 academic year after a seven-week break. Even with free education and government assurance that no child will be turned away due to lack of school fees, parents are decrying the high cost of education materials. As Zain Said reports. It is back to school as classes reopen for first time in the 2022 education calendar. Parents trooping to bookshops and uniform outlets to shop for their children. But for many, the cost of education material is now worrying. So I used to come a double because I've been buying here all my little bazaar because I want to know about. So if you compare a price, you know, when come come a double the price. Compared with other work at Already battered by the high cost of living, many lament that the cost of books, mainly for grade 6 CBC pupils, was unrealistic and is making a mockery of the all free concept. Kuchipanga kama mzazi. Zao mini kona twins. So you can imagine I'm naweka naweka times two. So far, I'm a figure of 25,000 as Jamalisa Yote. As I'm kona twins, I'm kina nuwe ilazi ma nuwe ilazi. For Oscar Geha, a mother of four, she has to balance her budget, forcing her to forego buying sweaters due to high prices. The only call for Kagea is to the government to address the high cost of living. In Mombasa County, a section of parents with students joining grade 6 claim they cannot access some... From uniform centers, bookshop centers, and transport sector is a beehive of activities as parents rush to ensure a smooth start of 2022 term one learning. For Prime Edition, I'm Zainab Said. Well, it's darkest before dawn. Chief Justice Martha Kome has launched the decentralization of operations of the political party's disputes tribunal, PPDT, in seven counties. The CJ says the judiciary will leverage on technology for efficient delivery of justice by the political party's disputes tribunal through the e-filing system. Well, before this move, all political parties' disputes were filed in Nairobi, as Sarafina Robi reports. It is a sigh of relief as the judiciary ends the incessant trouble where all disputes arising from political parties' primaries were filed in Nairobi. This is after Chief Justice Martha Comey launched the decentralizing of operations of the political parties' disputes tribunal in seven counties, which include Nairobi, Ademilimani Law Courts, Meru, Mombasa, Kisumu, Kakamega, Nyeri, and Eldoret. In John Southside, Nairobi, we are sure that Kenyans can now access justice regarding political disputes without having to travel long distances to access justice in Nairobi. In order to ensure the process is seamless, the judiciary has vowed to use the e-filing system to ensure the process is cost-effective, expeditious and convenient. 
that we have activated an e-filing system for the PPDT. This means that we expect those who will be filing cases before the tribunal to use the online filing system. In line with this, court administrators of each of the seven identified court stations and ICT offices have been designated to be on standby to assist any persons who will be in need of guidance or assistance on filing of their political disputes. Serafina Robi for Prime Edition. Now, Safina, presidential aspirant Jimmy Wajigi, has called on government to rework the competency-based curricula, saying that it will not address emerging needs in the education sector. Wajigi said results of the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education released on Saturday brought out a gap that he said will not be addressed by the new curriculum. The results released Saturday, more than 46,000 students who set the exams code an E, a trend that Safina presidential aspirant Jimmy Wanjagi says is worrying. Wanjagi now wants the government to rethink the competence-based curriculum, claiming the results had exposed serious gaps in the education sector that even CBC has failed to address. The results that have come out of KCSC results are disastrous. They are disastrous. They are pain in very many homes in this country. Severe, severe pain to parents and to students. The Safina presidential aspirant says through CBC, most learners are more likely not to take up innovative skills. There is a great sense of hopelessness and uncertainty with our children, parents and teachers. And this goes to a fundamental issue that we do not have a proper education philosophy. We are unclear about exams and its outcomes, and we are unclear about its aims. Education, as you know, is fundamental to achieving human potential, human potential, developing an equitable society, and promoting national development. Wanjigi, however, lauded the late former President Mwai Kibaki's administration, which he claims had invested in education through free primary education and the expansion of secondary schools and universities, enabling many Kenyan children to acquire education. Brings us to our first break. Karo and Jenga is on standby. Second break, actually. Mm -hmm. right. Second break. <laughs> Second break. It's been and a also, tough day. Karen Kibet is <laughs> also on standby with the day's sports, sports news. You do not want to miss that. But remember, we are asking you, how do you mm -hmm. remember the former, the late former president, Mwai Kibaki? Do engage us. We are live on our social media platforms. Let's also keep it interactive on Twitter at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity and Ascom Sale. At Tom Boya to for the hashtag is Prime Edition. And you promise to read some of those feedback. I will be sampling them just before the tail end of this broadcast. Put that on your phone. Have a new story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email news at kbc.co.ke or call 0723 892 654 or 0734 780 124. We have a lot of stories, and there's an interview that I, I enjoyed. <laughs> East African pop star Nadia Mokami released her sophomore AP Bundle of Joy over the week exclusively on one of Africa's leading streaming services. Need to shift from the narrative that 
Kenyans don't read. Because you can see so many uh, bookstores, there are so many upcoming bookstores. Just continue to invest in their craft, continue to write, continue to read. Some people dream of success, while Good Morning Kenya is here to make that happen. Start your day with authentic updates that can make or break your day. Make sure you know before you go. Join Jen Wamboi, Dorino Kelo, Regina Manyara, and Victor Olo to share every morning with you. It doesn't matter where you are. You can always access Good Morning Kenya from different devices. Good Morning Kenya. Every Monday to Thursday from 6.30 to 10 a.m. on KBC Channel 1. Welcome back. Let's now focus on today's business. My name is Carol Jenga. Milk prices will continue to rise in the next few weeks as animal feed stocks dwindle. Animal feeds manufacturers say the price of the daily meal has gone up by 700 shillings and is likely to increase as May stocks in Tanzania dwindle. The miller are further urging the government to allow feed millers to purchase maize from the strategic food reserve. According to animal feed manufacturers, Kenya faces a huge deficit in animal feed, which is estimated to be 500,000 tons. The manufacturers are warning that the current stock cannot last up to October, when Kenya expects the next maize harvest. The scarcity is further expected to lead to an increase in milk prices. Farmers are not able to feed their cows on these uh, feed supplements, because you know, feed supplements are what are used to feed the cows to increase milk production. But not because the cost of feed is high, many farmers are no longer feeding their cows. Milk prices have gone up by more than 30% in the last six months. A litre of the commodity is now retailing at an average of 130 shillings, up from 90 shillings in June 2021. To stabilize prices of animal feeds and livestock products, the government has been advised to allow feed millers to purchase maize from the strategic food reserve to cushion the millers from high maize prices. Should the strategic grain reserve have any maize above the requirements for human food, then like they have done before, three years ago, they should allow us to buy whatever is over and above the uh, requirement for milling. The millers say a bag of maize has jumped to 4,500 shillings from 3,700 shillings late last year. Feed prices are high because the, maize, the, product, the cost of maize is high. Maize being one of the ingredients that is necessary in feed manufacturing. Among other proposals, the feed manufacturers want the yellow maize import window increased to three years from the current one year as the Russian-Ukraine war has disrupted the feed supply chain, increasing global feed prices by 40%. The government gave three years and in those three years, number one, um, we should have sufficient time to close any deals with commodity dealers internationally. But also, secondly, the disruptions in logistics worldwide will have settled down. Currently, manufacturers are importing maize from Tanzania at 4,200 shillings per 90 kg bag. Benson Ruba reporting for Prime Edition. Motorists in Migori, Kisi, Kericho and Thika are still grappling with fuel supply challenges for the fifth week in a row despite measures put in place to stabilize supplies. A spot check by KBC found that most petrol stations in these areas did not have fuel with those with the commodity experiencing long queues. Fuel shortage continues to bite hard in some areas as most petrol stations are experiencing supply challenges. A spot check by KBC found that motorists and Boda Boda riders in Migori, Kisi, Kericho, Busia and Juja were queuing for hours to get fuel at a few filling stations that had fuel. This is despite the government announcing there is a sufficient stock that could last the country until June. <laughs> 
Hata kama tuliambiwa mafuta imeongezewa na tukakubali mafuta imeongezewa na bado uko na hiyo shida ya mafuta. In Kisi, motorists armed with jerrycans have returned as they hunt for the precious commodity in vain, with some saying they were buying fuel between 190 shillings and 220 shillings. Wali walisema kwamba fuel itakuja. Jamini hata kwa sasa hata mkitazama hapa nyuma, kuna mrundiko wa pikipiki na magari, hakuna fuel. Kama 20 minutes. This is way above the EPRA recommended price of almost 145 shillings and 90 cents per litre of super petrol. Petrol stations attendants say they are facing difficulties accessing fuel. The situation is similar in Kiricho where most petrol stations had no fuel. Daniel Ruto, a resident of Soin, traveled for more than 80 kilometers to Karicha town hoping to fuel, but to his surprise, no petrol station had fuel. With the reopening of schools, PSVs and border border riders say they are losing business as they spend hours queuing at filling stations for fuel. Piki piki ziko, kazi iko, watoto wa shule, wako, kupeleka shule ya kuna, ujua petrol. So, sasa tunasumbukana sana, hata watoto wetu wenye wanaenda shule ni saizi, hata tunashindu, hata watafaya na mnagani. They are calling on the government to address the crisis. A sport check in Mombasa established that fuel supplies had normalized. Chicken, pizza and burgers are the top three most ordered food items online in the country. This is according to the Jumia Food Index that indicates that Kenyans are becoming more creative and less traditional in the way they source for their daily meals. Now Jumia Kenya CEO Betty Mwangi says the growing internet penetration is a driving uptick of e-commerce services with shoppers increasingly ordering for non-traditional items. There are 23.35 million internet users in Kenya in January 2022 with the internet penetration rate at 42% of the total population. Data from the Communication Authority of Kenya indicates that internet users increased by 1.6 million between 2021 and 2022. Internet users are projected to hit 53.6% by 2025. Players in the e-commerce industry believe expanding internet penetration and the middle class would drive uptick of the online trade three years but super excited now to be bringing dominoes online onto jumia which will um of course offer dominoes the opportunity to you know sell to our three million plus um uh, base of customers but more importantly to our customers we're very passionate about our customers to offer you now even more choice great well we're very excited first of all to bring the dominoes brand onto the jumia platform um We've been with Jumia for some years as partners with Colston Creamery brand and we've been very happy with the results. A study on consumer spending revealed that four out of five surveyed consumers in Kenya are shopping more since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, a trend expected to stay. I see growth in, in online and in e-commerce. I see a huge growth coming there. Not sure that it will ever completely eradicate that little supermarket trip, but definitely becoming more and more prevalent and more and more customers coming on board. To further boost its market share, Jumia Food has inked a deal with Domino's Pizza that will see consumers order for meals across the various Domino's outlets in Nairobi and Mombasa. On its part from the US franchise, Domino's will be leveraging Jumia's network to expand its reach. Chicken, pizza and burgers are the top three most ordered food items in the country. So we currently have uh, seven Domino stores in Kenya. Six of them are in Nairobi, one in Mombasa. Um, we are uh, in the process of doing a big uh, geographical launch in Kenya. We're expecting to double the size of our, our fleet, so to go to 14 stores by the end of this year. Um, and uh, we see great potential in Kenya, um, and we want to make sure that we cover all neighborhoods and we're not there yet in the big cities. The plan is to focus on Nairobi and Mombasa and then more in regionally into Kisumu, into um, Nyanyuki, sorry, potentially Nyanyuki, but definitely Nakuru, um, definitely Eldoret as well.
Well, that's how we wrap up business news for tonight. Karen Kibet is coming up next with the sports update. My name is Carol Jenga. Have a good night. Did you know that while many road traffic crashes are avoidable, human behavior continues to be the leading cause? Stop these crashes before they stop you. Ensure that you adhere to traffic rules to prevent these crashes. Always observe the fatal six to be safe. When driving, please ensure that your speed is within the stipulated limits, the road ahead is clear before overtaking, stick to your lane, keep left unless carefully overtaking. Ensure that you are well rested before driving on long distance and never drink and drive. Usalama Barabarani starts with you. Fika Salama. This message is brought to you by NTSA and the European Union. How? Hizo sizo kuwa na maana ndio zimefanya haya yakatokea. Wakili nenda katafute kazi tu. Sorry enough is enough eh? I've had enough of you. Umesikia? Mimi nimelala peke yangu hapa kitanda hiki leo. Toka, toka kabla nikuaibishe. Welcome back to Prime Edition. Let's now get sporty. My name is Karen Kibet. Now, the first batch of Team Kenya to the 24th Summer Deaf Olympics left the country today evening for Brazil, with the second batch expected to leave the country later tonight. The contingent comprised of the National Women Deaf Football Team. The first batch of Team Kenya to the Deaf Olympics in Brazil left the country today ahead of the game set to be held from the 1st of May to 15th of May, with football getting the summer games underway. Kenya will play their first match against Japan on the 3rd of May. Their second match will be against the hosts one day later, and then clash with Poland and the US on the May 7th and 9th respectively. The team is about 80%, and uh, the three weeks we've been in camp, uh, the players have really pushed themselves and I believe the preparation, uh, the government has really supported us. Uh, the players uh, of whom uh, we, were, we, we remained with, I think they are good and uh, I believe by the time we start our first match, that's when the exams will start. The National Women Day football team under the tutelage of Coach Ben Bella is gracing the global championship for the first time ever. We'll be there for some, some days, maybe a week before we start our matches, so I feel we will adapt to the weather. Since the matches are being played in a round-robin format, Kenya only needs to register two victories to be in the medal bracket. Athletics men and women, basketball men and women, handball men and women, and golf men are the other Kenyan teams expected to travel in the course of this week for the Games. Thank you, Bartley, for that report. Moving on, Tennis Kenya organized an exhibition match fundraiser for young tennis sensation Angela Okutoi at the Karen Country Club. The fundraiser event was aimed at helping Okutoi meet her expenses as she sets off her eyes on furthering her stint in professional tennis. Angela, who broke the ceiling following her recent success at the Australian Open in January, when she became the first Kenyan female to win a Grand Slam Juniors match, will be looking to write history in the Kenyan tennis scene when she makes appearances at the French Open and Wimbledon, respectively. From the first Australian Open, I just went there to enjoy and I reached the third round. But this time for the remaining Grand Slams, I have a goal and I really want to win one of them if possible. So I'm not waiting for each history to be made so that I can make a goal for myself. No, I have a goal already and my goal is to win a Grand Slam. 
Angela has used continental events in Morocco and Egypt in the recent past to prepare for these major world events. She will be going for a camp sponsored by the International Tennis Federation, where she will be put in training with the Grand Slam team in Italy for two weeks, after which she will be exposed to tour events whose standards are equivalent to those of the Grand Slam to set the mood for the French Open. Angela is going for a, a training camp. Luckily, International Tennis Federation uh, came in handy to put her in a team. There's a team called the Grand Slam uh, team. Okutoyi will go to a one-week camp to familiarize herself with the grass court, which is the playing field at Wimbledon in the United Kingdom. For sports, I am Nora Mongi. Angela is set to play in the later on. Thank you, Nora, for that report. Now, over 1,200 junior athletes who have been in residential training camps for the past three weeks have been released. The athletes spread across 26 camps in several parts of the country were assigned coaches and physiotherapists in preparation for the national trials slated for July where Athletics Kenya will select a team to defend the global title in Cali, Colombia from the 1st to the 6th of August. Athletics Kenya officials assessed all the camps to determine the progress as well as motivating the junior athletes. I participate in 100 and 200 meters. Our camp is good. We enjoy being here and we love our coaches and the way they are training us. Yeah, I like to go to Colombia to explore to explore Colombia and also to, to represent Kenya as an under-20 athlete. My ambition is to be the champion, maybe, yeah, and also to help others. Those will come after me. Some other time in the train, one of those sports is a good train. Na mosso sana, na points, na spikes, ina kwa bigumu sana. Background so, Still in athletics, it's all systems go ahead of this year's national athletics trial set to kick off tomorrow at the Moy International Sports Center Kasarani. Athletes, coaches and federations have finalized their training programs ahead of the national event. Among the big names likely to feature is Africa 100 meter record holder Ferdinand Omanyala and reigning world 1500 meter champion Faith Kipiagon. The three day event will see athletes battle it out aiming to secure the available slots to represent Kenya in the Africa Senior Athletics Championships and the Commonwealth Games. Thank and those you. are all the spot stories we had for you tonight. I wanted to say thank you, Marakwet. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just busy here going through the... Honorable Festus Michael, I know that's what you're looking for. Eh? Can I start off with this <laughs> yes, one? Yes, yes, yes. Um, he says, Williams from Makweni, I remember Mwai Kibaki's jokes and he gives examples. Open quote, when you bore kabisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and okay. of course. some of the light moments there and then we also have um, Chitiko mm -hmm. right, who is saying that um, Peter from Lenanangong Road to me I remember Mze for bringing up free primary education and opening up so many learning institutions actually Mze played a big role in the field of education I salute you Mze rest in peace we will miss you we yeah, have. we have Anganga Mustafa, who's also saying uh, President uh, Kibaki was a success story politically, inspired generations, and may his soul rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Remember, the body continues to lie in state. Three days. For three days, tomorrow and Wednesday, feel free to go and, you know, pay, pay your, your last, last respect. respects. That's right.
That's all you have to wrap it up. It's always a great pleasure having your company. I'm Purity Maceo and Lensa Odingo has been our sign language interpreter tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow, God willing. Good night and God bless. And I'm Tom Boyer. Bye-bye.